Okay, welcome to the fifth project for 2019 Excel with Sam. The first thing we always do is save our project with the name underscore two, which I've already gone ahead and done. I have the instructions printed off, so I'm just going to read them out. So step one, Eugene Park is a senior consultant for the Seven Summits Group, a consulting firm in Denver, Colorado. He is working with Hardy Fit Tools, a manufacturer of hand tools, to improve their business operations. He has created a workbook projecting the company's orders and inventory and asks for your help in completing and formatting the projections. Go to the orders worksheet. Rename the orders worksheet to use orders and inventory as the worksheet name. So we're going to right click on the worksheet, rename, and we're going to go orders and inventory. So just make sure that you don't have any typos there and click enter. Step two, unfreeze the top two rows of the worksheet and then middle align the contents of merged cell A1. So if you notice when you scroll, one and two stay frozen. So we're gonna highlight those two, go up to the view tab, over to the freeze panes. We are going to choose unfreeze. So now when we scroll, it all scrolls. Second part of number two is to middle align the contents of the merged cell A1. So here's a1 and we're going to middle align so we go back to the home tab and middle align is up here step three cut the contents of cell k2 and paste them in cell a2 k2 cut is over here paste in a2 and in cell b2 insert a formula that uses the now function to display today's date so we will go equals and enter in the now function. We've done this in an earlier project too. You just have to go open close bracket to get today's date in short date format. Step four, merge and center the range A3, A9, rotate the text up to 90 degrees in the merge cell and then change the width of column A to five. All right, so A3 to A9, we need to merge and center. Now we need to change the orientation of that text so we can actually see it. So while it's still selected, we're going to go over to Format, Cells, and we're going to go to Alignment. And we're going to bring this fellow up here to 90, or you could just type in 90 down here. Okay, so now that we can see projected orders, we need to change the width of this column to 5. So I'm going to right-click on my A and click Column Width, and I'm going to go 5. Perfect. Step five, copy the formatting from the range B5 to K5 and apply it to the range B7 to K7. So B5 to K5, you're going to copy and you're going to paste it into B7 to K7 and you're just going, you have to choose a, spa a paste special because they just want you to copy the formatting, so you're only going to paste the formatting. This is down here. So step six in the cell B8, decrease the indent by one level. So here's B8, and if you notice, it's indented compared to the one above it. Now you haven't seen this since Word, I wouldn't say, but your decreasing indent is right here in your alignment group. So you decrease it to get it to go back. Then it says copy the values in the range C26 to G26. So you're going to have to scroll down a little bit and we go C26 to G26 and we're going to copy. I just used my keyboard shortcut which was control C or you could go up here and click on copy. And I need to paste only the values in the range C8 to G8. So I'm going to go paste only the values and then delete row 26 to remove the repeated data. So I can scroll down here, here's row 26, I'm going to right click and delete. Okay, step 7, use goal seek to set cell C11 to the value of 300 by changing cell C7. So set C11. We're going to go up to data and we find goal seek in the what if analysis group. Here's goal seek and we are setting cell C11 to be 300 by changing cell C7. 
Okay. Oh, still going. Perfect. So what it did was it figured out if the average order was 300, how many tool sets needed to, there to be here in order to make this 300. So it just gave us the response there. Okay, so step eight in cell H4, insert a line, spark line. Based on the data in the range C4, G4. So we're going to go to insert and we're gonna do spark line. And we're gonna base it off of C4, G4. So we're gonna go C4 to G4 and we're gonna go spark line and the location range is going to be H4, that's where it's going to be pasted. So that's our spark line, and it says fill the range H5 to H9 without formatting based on the contents of cell H4. So this is H4, and we are using the fill all the way down to H9. And it says fill without formatting, so we need to choose a special type of fill so that it keeps the same Notice how it keeps the light dark, light dark. That's the point of that. Change the color of the spark lines in the range H4 to H9 to gold accent 6, darker 25%. So we're going to highlight them again. We're going to have a look at our spark line color. Gold accent 6, darker 25%. So we're going to go down, click darker 50, darker 25. Perfect. Perfect. Add markers for each month and then change the marker color to green accent four. So here's our markers. Markers. And we're gonna go to green on green. Darker 50, so that's the furthest one down. Perfect. Step nine, copy the formula in cell K4. So as you can see, you don't see it here, but your formula shows up in your formula box up here. So it's I4 multiplied by J4. So it says to copy that and paste the formula in number formatting in the range K5 to H5. So this would be the same thing as if you filled it, but they're just showing you another way that you can do it instead of your fill handle. So we're going to copy and we are going to paste in these here, K5 to 8, K8, and we are going to paste and it says paste the formula and number formatting. So formula and number formatting. Perfect. Same thing as fill. Both work fine. Step 10 and cell C12, insert a formula that divides the total orders for August, cell C9, by the total number of orders, cell I9. Use an absolute reference to cell I9 and then copy the formula to the range D12, G12. A few steps in this one. So we're going to start with C12. And inserting a formula that divides C9 by I9, so C9 divided by, and it says we need to use an absolute reference to I9, so we're gonna go dollar sign I dollar sign nine. And remember how that will always reference just that one cell, it won't change if we copy this over. Um, enter, and now we need to fill that over here. And if you notice, just to prove it again, I9 never changed. It's still always referencing I9, but the relative cell next to it, G9, that kept changing every time we changed columns. Okay, so that's, again, what your absolute cell reference does. Step 11, in cell H15, insert a column spark line based on the data in the range C15 to G15. So here's C15 to G15, and we're going to go up to Insert, and here's a column. Again, it's going to ask us for the location range, so where do we want to put it, and the first thing it tells us is H15. Display the high point and low point in the spark line. So we're going to go high point and low point, and 
fill the range H16 to H23 without formatting. So we're going to fill this range down to H23 without the formatting. So we're going to have to click on our special fill, fill without formatting, so we get those colors back. Step 12, copy the formula in cell I15. So again, if you click here, you're not going to see the formula. You're going to need to look up at your formula box. So it's the sum of the range C15 to G15. And they want you to copy that formula and paste only the formula in range I16 to I23. So you're going to copy and you're going to paste only the formula here. So we're going to go paste special and you're going to choose just the formula. Step 13, change the chart in the range J10 to O23 to a pie chart. Enter the average orders per month as a chart table title and add data labels to the outside end of each slice. So you already have a chart here entered. Once you have it entered in, you can get your, and you click on it, you get your extra tools up on your ribbon. So they want you to do some editing to this chart. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on chart design and they ask you to change it to a pie chart. So you're going to go to change chart type and you're going to pick pie chart. Okay, and then it's going to say enter average orders per month as a chart title. So here is your chart title. Make sure you don't have any typos when you type this in. Like that. Yeah, it looks good. And add data labels to the outside end of each slice. So we're going to add some data labels to the outside end of each slice. All right, so it's all finished up. You're going to just go here and click Save button. Make sure that it's underscore 2, and you can submit the SAM for grading, and we'll see you on the final project. Great job.